more questions, I'm going to go a little bit into PET, uh, how to irrigate based on potential of apple transpiration. Irrigation sizzling, and I'm going to talk about cotton. Um, uh, Dr. Brent Bean showed a hypothetical use curve or 10 year average of the use curve for water use in grain soil. And I absolutely love hypothetical water use curves. Um, I tell my kids when I was raising my kids, I said, everything in life happens on a bell shaped curve. If you understand that, you're going to go far in life. Everything in life happens on a bell shaped curve. You know, how much money you make out of a bell shaped curve. If you go to people filing into a sports facility, it's on a bell shaped curve. Everything happens on a bell shaped curve. This is, um, this is, <laughs> illustrates that you know, on cotton, this is your inches per day, and this would be 0.05 inches per day, which is not very much, and this would be the different growth stages, and you see, obviously, as the cotton advances in its development, the more water it begins to use. But the point is, is if you really don't understand the relationship of how much water a cotton plant is using at any particular time during its production period, you're not going to have a clue on how much that you need to irrigate it. But there's also other factors as the wind blows and the temperature and everything causes this some evaporation off of the soil level. So there's some things that you can't calculate very well just by observation, but this website allows you to calculate. So if you were a farmer and you said, okay, I want to adopt some of this PDT scheduling or some basic principles in irrigation, management that you need to follow. One of them is, you know, you need to figure out what is your capacity to irrigate. And for us, we can put out about an inch and a quarter per week is going to be the maximum amount of water that we can irrigate on a weekly cycle. It isn't going to take an inch and a half of water every week. It's only going to take an inch and a half of water a week at the peak demand. The point is, is whenever you hear that cotton, I've learned over the past few years to do water use problem, you're way better off irrigating it for a certain specific percentage of PET on a consistent basis, but it put a lot of water here and then kind of stressing it and put a lot of water on and kind of stressing it. You know, you're way better off irrigating a consistent percentage of PET. Um, in some years, we can get up to 0.3 tenths of an inch of demand per day. Some years, it's only 0.25. But we're going to take the worst case scenario and we're going to say, okay, I'm going to, let's say you're, going to, you're trying to figure out how much, you, what your capacity to irrigate is during peak demand. So we're going to take, um, I like to irrigate it about a seven day schedule on a minimum. It doesn't have to be seven, but you have to have the ability to be at least on seven day intervals. Okay, so we're looking at three tenths of inch a day during peak demand, and so we're going to calculate at 100% of PET, seven days times three tenths of an inch per day is going to be 2.1 inches per week. There's very, very few people out here that can irrigate at 2.1 inches per week. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how much we can put on. I said we can put on an inch and a quarter per week. And we're going to divide that by 100%, which is 2.1. So we're going to irrigate at 59.5% of PET. That's going to be my goal. 59.5% of PET is going to irrigate consistently at that level from about two in the morning to first open bowl. Okay. So what's your pre flower irrigation strategy? You're not using the water here very heavily pre-flower, here's 0 0.05, 0 0.1 inches per day. And what I like to do is I follow those PET tables and they're going to show very, very low amounts of water. And I kind of supplement that early in the season prior to first bloom. And what I want to do is maintain adequate moisture in the root zone. Uh, when cotton's 12 inches tall, it's probably got 18 to 24 inches of roots. So what I like to do is when the cotton is just a little, you know, three or four inches tall, I'm really just kind of worried about the moisture in the pot. So as it, as it grows, I start worrying about the moisture uh, in the lower profiles, one and two foot. And then when it gets to the bloom stage, 
then is a point where it's going to be a critical transition in the way that you manage time. The reason why that I don't really get too excited here is because um, the use rates are actually lower than the evaporation rates. So early prior to flower, uh, prior to low coverage, the majority of the water that you lose off your cotton field comes from evaporation. And nothing you can do about it. You, know, you can't turn the sun off, you can't turn the wind off. And so if you're out there picking water into this crop, and all it's doing is evaporating, you know, you're not, you're wasting water, you're not managing well. And so by knowing what these, these uh, numbers are, it's number per day, and just kind of feeling the soil, probing down in there and feeling it, you can get an idea of what we're gonna, how well you're going to maintain moisture in the root zone prior to bloom. Okay, just want to have good moisture into that root zone prior to bloom. And when you get to get to first bloom, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to add water to the profile if you're going to irrigate a percentage of DET. Why do you think that we select first bloom or right around that first flower? Anybody have an idea? The reason is, is you're approaching that <coughs> two inches of water demand per day. If you wait much past that point, your, your ability to add water is just going to be subtracted. In other words, the crop's demand is going to be greater than your ability to, to add it. So what I do is I come in here and so pro, the soil profile. We can hold about an inch and a quarter per foot. And I generally put about an inch and a half, you know, an inch and a half, maybe once or twice, try to flower and I try to build that soil reserve. And the reason why is I know when I get up in here, I can't irrigate it 2.1 inches per day. My wells don't have that capacity. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hedge my bed, and I'm going to use a little bit of this soil moisture to kind of extend my yield load. And then, of course, when we get up in here, right about in here after we put this on, we start to count PET, and we're going to irrigate it a percentage of PET during this water use site. Uh, peak water use. In my case, in the initial quarter of a week, we're going to irrigate it 60%. Prior to canopy closure, the majority of water loss is from evaporation. After canopy closure, the majority of water loss is through transpiration. It's taken into the plant, and that's when you need to be able to apply your water. So, we're going to talk about for all this, what I'm telling you today, for it to work. You got to, there's got to be some parameters, okay? And the first one is, is your irrigation system must be efficient. If you've got a broadcast spray irrigation system, we're broadcasting the water, you know, across all 60 or 80 inches of your soil profile if you're on 30 or 80 inch road. It's not efficient. And since water is the number one limiting factor, that was the first thing I could do. Managing water efficiency efficiently makes you money. And the only, um, is, is there anybody here farm around Brownfield or uh, La Mesa where you have sandier soils? Uh, where you have a little bit sandier soils, there may be uh, some needs for a gas spray. Okay, a little bit different strategy. But if you're farming in the Pullman's or the Olsen Clay Loam, uh, your irrigation system must be efficient. Um, like a LEPA system, alternate for a LEPA system. Um, for every inch you put on, you get eight tenths of an inch available moisture to the plant. In broadcast spray in our area, um, you get, uh, on a broadcast spray, you only get about a half inch. And so you can see if your evapotranspiration transpiration rates, if you put on an inch and you only get a half inch available, and your evapotranspiration transpiration rate is 0.3 tenths of an inch a day, you barely supplied that cotton and that water the last one day. That system numbers came. Um, in general, more water is, off, is less often. It's better than less water more often. I was really glad to see uh, Brent Payne put that in his slide where he said a minimum of an inch, a three quarters of an inch, and those numbers apply to cotton. Uh, for corn, you'd probably want to go a minimum of an inch to an inch and a quarter if the soil will take it. Okay. Um, you need to irrigate a consistent percentage of PET during peak water demand. If you use this system, you're not going to put water on when you don't need it, 
but it's going to, you are going to put water on when you do need it. You're going to conserve the water that you would have put on when you didn't need it and have that water available when you do need it. Also, you will understand your relationship between water demand at any point in time and be able to irrigate other crops that you may have with more confident. It's a good system. Okay. So, if we're going to irrigate at 60% of DET, um, here's how I do it. I kind of create my own spreadsheet. But you can just go right to the website and these numbers will come up. Um, for example, we started at first blue. Put on, in our case, we didn't even have to put on any water to fill the profile because we had so much rain last year that the profile was full at first bloom. So I just picked first bloom. I said, I'm going to start counting PET. These are numbers right off of my field. And at 100% of PET, on the 26th, it was going to demand 0.12 inches. That's what the crop was asking for at that particular time. But remember, I'm 60%. I'm irrigating at 60%. So I'm going to run a total out here. I'm going to run 60% times 0.12 is 0.07. That's what I need is 0.07. That's my cumulative number. Then I come here on 27, 0.13 PET, and that's going to be about 0.08. So I add 0.08 to 0.07, and I'm, I'm, I'm needing 0.15. But remember, I'm still operating off of the profile. Yeah, I've got a full profile. Okay. Um, then we come in here the next day. It works the same way. These numbers kind of go up and down depending on how much uh, cloud cover we have and what the temperatures are. And so finally I come in here and it rains. And I was up to needing 0.37 inches. But remember, I'm not going to wait until I need an inch to an inch and a quarter because that's where... Uh, where I want to set my irrigation triggers an inch to an inch and a quarter. So we come in here and put on 0.55 inches, but we also had 0.13 demand, and this number is actually incorrect. That should be 0.07, but we're actually ahead 0.07 inches. Okay? So what it is, it's just kind of like running a checkbook. Okay? This number times 60% added, this number times 60% added, so forth, so forth. <coughs> we got to the uh, 6th of August and we're at 0.48. <coughs> anyway, this kept adding up, adding up, adding up. 0 0.6 times 0.19. Is everybody following that? Okay. I'm going to down here and I needed 1.23 inches. I put on an inch and a quarter. I had 0.22 on that day, so I multiplied that by 60%. And I have a little bit of carryover, and so I'm, I'm at 0.11. Really a precise system. At the end of this, I'm going to show you some data. You think, well, this thing can't work through very well on yield, but it's really good. <laughs> Any questions about that? The, the question he answered, he says, let's say you're going into full uh, full flower, or you're going into early flower with 100% profile, would you ever change your irrigation capacity, um, up your irrigation capacity to try to take advantage of greater yield? Yes, I would if I had the capacity to irrigate. And you can actually look at these, if you look at those previous numbers, my highest number was 0.22 daily potential of apple transpiration. I figured it at 0.3. Brent Bean said in his presentation that the kind of the sweet spot in the irrigated and PET is 60 to 75 percent. It's exactly the same thing for cotton. You start getting over 75 percent and you're rolling the dice on weather or whether you're going to have the heat units to mature the crop out. So yeah, you can use that. It's really a cool tool where you you know where you have some options and some play where you can really uh, you know, adapt your irrigation planning program and come out and put more yield in there. I only have two more slides and uh, these, these are probably the ones that uh, will interest you all the most. But I, I conduct uh, water use, top water use trials um, 
and Edmondson, Texas. And we took 12 cotton varieties and um, we changed our center pivot. And every 16 rows is a different irrigation regime. One, six, one set of 16 rows, we put cutoffs on the drops so we can cut off all the water on that 16 rows. The next 16 rows, I re nozzle those drops where it puts out uh, less water, 50% uh, less than what my 60% ET or my next set of nozzles is nozzle for. And I have one set of nozzles that is just standard for my pivot based on the gallon pumping capacity. And then the next set of nozzles, the 16, I put larger nozzles in the drop where it will actually put on 50% more water than what a 60% PET did. So I end up with four irrigation regimes. I end up with an irrigation regime that's rain fed. If I base all my, my applications based on 60% and these nozzles are putting on half as much as these, then I get half as much water. This, the 90%, if I have set nozzles based on flow rate to be 50% um, more moisture, I, get, I move up to 90% PT. So what we have is in the same field, we have three different swaths or four different swaths formed in that field where you can plant these varieties in there and see how they do head to head in the same field under different irrigation capacities. Um, in the rain fed plot, what we generally do is we cut off all the water to that plot right at bloom. Even if we have to put a little bit of water on it to incorporate a herbicide, we'll cut water off right at bloom. So it's, it's rain fed up to a point. Then all the rest of them are irrigated based on PET. Last year we had 6.6 .6 inches pre-plant rainfall all the way across all the regimes. Emergence to square, we had 2.3 inches across all the regimes. Square to bloom, we had 8.7 inches. And then we had some uh, 1.24 inches right when we started this, the 60% ET. Um, across all the regimes. So we had about 18.8 inches of total rainfall last year on this cotton field. Then we came in here and in our ET program, we added 1.71 inches, 3.41 inches, and 5.12 inches. Okay. How much water do you think cotton will make? How much length per acre do you think cotton will make if it's had 18.84 inches up to blue? Anybody have a clue? Take a guess. Don't be surprised. Out of those 12 cotton varieties, I average the yields, and the average yield in the rain fed plots with 18.84 inches was 660 pounds. The range of yields was 529 pounds to 862. When you added 1.71 inches of water and a 30% ET, you went from 660 to 1,015. 1.71 inches calculated to be delivered at precisely the time that cotton was demanded it increased the yields to 1,015 pounds or 207.6 pounds per inch when you add 1.71 more pounds of inches you go to the next irrigation regime and that would be the 60% of PET and that would have been a total of 3.41 inches of irrigation delivered based on 60% of PET and we go to 155 pounds per inch. Then when you add another 1.71 inches, which would make this go from 3.41 to 5.12, the yields go up to 423 pounds average and you end up with about 83.6 pounds per inch. Many years, when we go from 60 to 90 percent, we get to 90 percent. These numbers can be no greater, often are no greater 
than the 60% PEP. One other thing that I want to ask you about this slide is you just sit here and look at it. What do you notice about this that is, to me, is the most intriguing part of how this water management deal works out? If you look here in our rain fed plot, we've supplied no rainfall or no irrigation after flowering. And our highest yield in the plot made 862 pounds. In my 30% PET, we added 1.71 inches, and the lower shielding plot made 909. So there's a variety in here in this group that has the ability to express itself under low water conditions that would almost make a rainfed plot equal to a 30%. The same thing with 30% to 40 we had 1140 pounds and the lowest yield we were running at 1214 into 60%. You know, that's not really that much difference. These seed companies, all of them, are really concentrating heavily on water management, how the varieties express themselves, different irrigation regimes. And the numbers are really it does work. I've seen it year after year after year. It's one of the most interesting things that I've ever worked with in my career. And so, you know, we never talk about flex and cotton ability to flex, but, you know, there are some varieties that have the ability to jump across those yield bar uh, water barriers in the end of the board. You can see that the difference between the yields and the rain fit is 333 pounds. Some of the varieties that perform best in this range are not necessarily best in this range. So I'm going to ask you a question, those of you that are farmers in this room, when you look at yield data and you make decisions about what varieties you're going to plant, do you ever ask the guy that's showing you the data, how much water does that, does that field see? Was it irrigated at 60% of PET or was it irrigated at 90% of PET? If you're sitting south of Lubbock and you can only irrigate at 30% of PET, it does you absolutely no good to look at yield data at 90% PET. Because some of those varieties that yield good at 90% of PET will not yield good in rain fed 30% PET situation. I see it over and over and over again. There are a few of them that can go very well from 30 to 60 to 90, and there's some that can go from rain fed to 30. But it's hard to find one. You very seldom find one that does real, real well here and also does real, real well here. You look at loan rates, kind of the same thing. We had a loan day of $380.47 in the rain fed. You had 1.71 inches, it goes to 573.20. That's $112.71 per inch. You go to 60% of PET, 738.69. That's 96.78 per inch over the previous irrigation regime. And then you go to 90% and you really don't increase you know, your loan value very much. And you go to 31.69. This cotton was planted on, the cotton I showed you this day on was planted on the 27th of May, which is very late. Our cutoff is about 20th, 25th. We like to have it in before the 20th, 25th. And we were still able to produce as I showed you. You know, 2.7 barrels per acre on May 27th planted cotton. If there is potential that we could have made more with a little bit different nitrogen management program, but anyway, that is kind of the way it works. Anybody, this is my last slide.